Hey, I am Frankie Rodriguez. I am on High School Musical, the musical, the series. I play Carlos, and this is Young Entertainment Mac. Again, for joining us. We are so excited to chat with you, and I'm Daniela with Young Entertainment Mag. It's so nice to meet you kind of in person here on <laughs> Zoom. Okay, jumping right in. So Olaf, you got Olaf. What was your reaction when you found out that you'll be playing Olaf within the show? I mean, my personal reaction was very different from Carlos's. I was like almost like gunning for it. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope I'm Olaf. <laughs> um, so I was very excited when I found out. That's so cool. I love to hear that. I mean, we were excited. So <laughs> can we ask if you have any solos? Any solos? Well, Olaf does sing in summer. So I think uh, I was obviously waiting to see if it happens. And um, I think we're always still waiting to see if it makes anything makes the final cut. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> That's so fun. So what's it like playing the lovable snowman? And what was the costume and makeup like for that? Oh my gosh, I think we actually get to see a sneak peek in the next episode of what the costume will resemble, but it went through a lot of different variations. Um, some with my face completely covered, some where they like tried to um, put the, car the carrot on my glasses. Um, so there was a lot of different um, parts of Olaf, but um, getting mm -hmm. to like finally put on the costume that ends up on the show. Uh, I think, I, I hope people laugh the way I was laughing. <laughs> That's so fun. Okay, so when you say there was variations, do you mean like in rehearsals, they like mess with the costume and they're like, oh, let's try this, let's try this. Um, it was mostly costume fitting. So we okay. had, I think it started right at the beginning um, when we started shooting. So we uh, put on a couple of different costumes and then we would get notes about it or things that they wanted to change or what also was gonna be the easiest to get in and out of on the day of. Um, and also what was gonna be the least hot, I think was a big issue. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, I could imagine. Okay, so I know you shared that you were personally so excited to play Olaf. So, but so is it the same thing like you're when you're waiting to hear the role you got when you find out like, OK, we're going to do Frozen. Like, is that the same when you're waiting to see the cast list in the show? Like, is the is the nerve wracking kind of feeling there like like it is on the show? Oh, yeah. I mean, once you find out what the show is, because our show is so known for doing all of these like twists and turns and sometimes some roles are uh, like gender bent and like it really could be anybody in those roles. So um, it's always a mystery right up into the last episode because anything can change. So it's also like, even though you are cast as that role, is that the role that you end up playing in the end? So um, there's just a lot of twists and turns. Oh my gosh, that is so fun. So exciting. It, the, the word that comes to mind on that is just improv. Like it feels like <laughs> improv, right? 100%, yeah. That is okay. Speaking of improv, do you have a history of taking improv classes as an actor? <laughs> I do. I, um, I'm i not the best at it. It's not like my favorite thing to do in the <laughs> universe, but it is a really, um, it's a fun tool to have in your back pocket, I think. Um, but I wish there was like a reality show where people filmed what improv classes are actually like and what yeah. people are doing in those classes. Cause I mean, there's some insane stuff happening in improv classes. <laughs> so insane. I used to take some when I lived out in LA and I remember it was like equally as terrifying as it was fun, but it was like yeah. roller coaster every time. It, it is, it's so nerve wracking, but I'm sure, I'm sure you're great at it. And I'm sure it's a great skill to have like with shows like this, which is, you know, it's so theater based too, which I feel like theater can feel like improv sometimes a bit. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That's so fun. Okay. So you and Dara are absolute fire this year. <laughs> <laughs> the phone scene when Courtney has to give up her phone and then when you're in the tent in episode three and she's spraying the bug spray and you're calling each other the finer things, co-club president, so <laughs> funny, so good. So did you do anything off camera to build that chemistry or what is your secret? 
Oh my gosh. Me and Dara kind of hit it off on the first day I met her. She was wearing these like huge chunky boots that had like comic book characters on them or something. And I was like, I like your book. Uh, I like your boots. And she was like, thanks. They were $20 at the thrift store. Sit down. I was like, oh, okay. And then that kind of like started everything. Um, so I think since like day one, me and Dara have been uh, going at it. <laughs> that is so funny. I love that. What a good memory too. So Seblos is kind of like a pair throughout High School Musical, the musical, the series. So what's it like being on your own this year and kind of having that independent storyline? Oh my gosh. I mean, it's definitely different and it's an adjustment since they really have been going since that first season. But I think at the same time, it is also interesting to see where else they're going to take these characters and these storylines. And sometimes I think in order to move a storyline forward, you kind of have to separate the two and kind of just like focus on the one to see what's gonna happen. So um, I'm excited to see what happens next season. Yeah, that's so fun. You're right, it totally moves the story along. It keeps- Yeah, it, it keeps it fresh and like yeah. on its toes, I think. Totally, totally, I love that. So, okay, in the first episode of season three, when Carlos finds out that Corbin Blue will be the celebrity Whose idea was it for you to say, are you telling me that I get to meet Corbin Bleh instead of Corbin <laughs> Blue? Was that improvised or what was it? It's so fun. That was not improvised. That um, first episode, uh, it, it's in. that's how it was written in the script. It was like to be pronounced like Corbin Bleh. Um, and I really didn't get it until like, the day of filming i was like what does this joke mean and i guess because it's like spelled a certain way people think it's like pronounced a certain way because it's not spelled like b-l-u-e so um i think that's where the joke came from but i was just as confused as everybody else but i'm glad it hit so hard because it is funny <laughs> it does hit. i feel like it just it so like resonates with your character too and like who you are so i think like that's what made it so funny but I love it. That makes sense because the spelling of it is weird. Like you yeah, there's like a there's something else in there. Yeah, it's E U. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Totally. So how do you get in the character? What are like your your secrets? Oh my gosh. I kind of uh I really rely on my memory of what I was like in high school to bring Carlos to life. And then I think what helps with everything else is getting to work with the rest of the cast. And once you're there with everybody else and you're seeing how they're reacting to things, then it becomes like a living, breathing machine. And so you're like, oh, okay. So, you know, it's just reacting. So um, that part is always fun. Yeah, so it sounds like you're really just like bouncing off of each other. I'm totally. Sure. Yeah, that's so fun. So it's kind of like Carlos is a little a little sneak peek into what you were really like in high school. <laughs> I love that. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to love hearing that. That is so fun. So what's one thing about season three or in season three that you've never done before in terms of your acting that you discovered or that you decided to implement that you think like you'll take that with you in your career? Ooh, there were, um, there, and, and I say this word very lightly, there was some stunts that I got to do in this next episode, some like dance stunts. Um, and so uh, I was very nervous, <laughs> but when I saw the first run, I was like, am I gonna do that? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, only if you're comfortable. And I was like, well, I'm gonna at least try and I'm gonna work it until the day and we'll see how I feel. But um, that was really fun because I, you're just put in those situations where sometimes, cause I'm also very scared of heights and like, you know, doing certain things. I don't want to hurt myself. So I was like, uh, I don't know, but um, I'm glad I was able to like push myself and just like see how far I can go. And I ended up doing it. So that was fun. Yeah, that is so fun. I can totally resonate with that. Like, I'm afraid of heights. I would be scared to try new stuff like that. So I bet you it really built your confidence, though, because I feel like once you do something and you realize, like, you can do it, you're like, oh, I can do this. I wonder what else I can do. Yeah, and I don't do roller coasters or scary movies. So this was, like, my way of um, feeling that adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's so fun. So in the first episode of the series, Carlos doesn't wear glasses, but then he starts wearing glasses in the next episode. So was that a writer's decision? Was that a you decision? 
what kind of conversation has to happen for a change to happen like that? So uh, I wear glasses and I wore glasses. The, those glasses that I wear on the show were my real glasses that I wore to the audition. And I remember it was like the first day of filming. My first day was the first, uh, it was like Carlos's scene with Miss Jen where they're in the office. And um, I really didn't think about it. I was like, I guess I'll just bring them and then I'll ask if they want them. And I think I just like forgot or something. And so in the middle of filming that scene, I remember, like, don't you wear glasses? I was like, yeah. They're like, maybe you wear them starting next episode. I was like, okay. Um, and that kind of, that, so that's how that happened. I guess it's my fault. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, okay. So just like a little slip of the mind. Yeah. I, I think it was, I also just like, didn't know who to ask about it. And I, you know, like on the first day, it was everybody's first day. So I think there was just a lot of like commotion happening. Yeah. That is so funny. What a <laughs> fun like behind the scenes stuff that I'm sure like no one knows that is so <laughs> cool so in the quinceanera episode Seblos had a history making kiss for Disney with many teens and young adults feeling represented on screen for the first time so what does that mean to you and what kind of responsibility do you feel in telling the story oh my gosh I mean it means a lot I, and uh, me and Joe I think we're talking about it yesterday or this morning where I was like you know it's like we grew up without this type of like representation and now like we get to do it for a whole new generation of people that get to feel seen and included um it that means a lot and um you know i really don't focus on i guess the pressures it could put on me but i try to just focus more on the response that it it's gotten which has been so positive and um people really love them so uh I think it's exciting to see that people are excited for that storyline. Yeah. Oh my gosh, for sure. And we talked to Joe too a few weeks ago and he shared something very similar. And it's just, it's cool to, to get to talk to both of you in such like a short period of time and just to get to know both of you. Um, so you got your first solo last year in a heartbeat. What was your initial reaction when you found out? Did you have any reservations or were you just so excited? What was your reaction? Oh my gosh. I mean, of course, I always wondered when, if and when Carlos would sing on the show because I guess he's more of the dancer. So I was like, it'd have to be like a very specific reason why he's singing on the show um, or singing outside of the shows within the show. Um, and our showrunner, Tim, he was like, I think it was like in passing, he was like, uh, Carlos has a solo episode 10. And I was like, uh, okay. And I remember he let me listen to it when we were filming something else. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. How fun. Can you explain to us? I'm sure the audience would love to know what is a showrunner? The showrunner is basically he runs the show. It's like there's all there's all these different departments when you're working on a show. There's hair and there's makeup and there's props and there's set design. And so it, it like kind of all goes up to a triangle to have one person to be able to like kind of manage everything. So it's basically like um, he's just managing the set and making sure everything is running smoothly. That is so cool. What a fun job. I'm sure that <laughs> is so special. So ever since In a Heartbeat, your bromance with Ricky has really blossomed. What has that been like working with Joshua, especially without Seb around at camp? It feels like you and Joshua have gotten super close. <laughs> I mean, working with Josh is always going to be a good time because um, he's just funny so and you never really know what he's gonna do in the take he kind of does things differently every take so it keeps it really does keep you on your toes um so i think and also that dynamic between carlos and ricky is really funny but it's also really special and really sweet to see um just to see that like kind of friendship blooming um but no it's always fun <laughs> that's so cool what are your thoughts on the meta of everything this season and the writers taking things from your personal lives? <laughs> um, it is sometimes a trip. I'm like the whole Corbin Blue filming a Disney plus documentary while they're filming something else Disney. I mean, it's like it my brain explodes. I wish I was clever enough to think of these stories. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is so cool. What, what is that like? How do they pull stuff from, from your real life? What is the process on that? I think that um, we're just, we're list, we're, people are listening more than we think. So when we're having okay. all these conversations or when we're posting our interests or things online, I think um, it does spark some sort of inspiration. But yeah. for the most part, I think it also comes down to like uh, casting. I feel like most of us are were probably a version of our characters in high school. So yeah. I think that also helps the case as well. Yeah, oh, I love that. So what has been your personal favorite high school musical, the musical, the series, behind the scenes moment so far? Oh my gosh, this past season, I mean, there's always so many, but like one thing I always love about our show is that it is a very musical show, both on screen and um, even when the cameras go down. And so if you're ever like in a musical mood or there's like, you have a song in your head, you're kind of like done for the rest of the day because everybody else is going to be singing it. And of course it's going to sound beautiful because like everybody's a professional singer. So um, that part is always fun. Just the fact that everybody can like play instruments and we have like a real like sound of music thing going. <laughs> Totally. So Joe mentioned that you guys will like always be singing or like one time you guys had this kind of Im impromptu small cabaret little uh, moment in your apartment with the cast. So what is one of your favorite off camera moments with the other cast members? Definitely that evening it was definitely like one of my favorite um, off camera moments because I was like, you know, at some point we're all not going to be on the show and we're all not going to be together and um everybody's going to go off and be crazy successful and um everybody has beautiful voices so like why not make everybody come together and sing some songs and sing stuff that they wanted to sing whether that was like their audition songs for the show or just like a place to try out new material um and so a lot of people uh, all, the whole cast game and sang songs and some people sang some original stuff that they had never um, put out before or that they were thinking about putting out. And so that was very special to be able to be like, wow, these people are incredible. Like it's insane. Yeah, oh my gosh, that is so cool. I can only like imagine to the lifelong friendships that you guys have created. <laughs> I mean, that's like a really special bond to yeah, be able to sweet. be with all those people that have that same thing in common of just like this crazy love for music. So that's really, really nice. Um, okay, now a question from Twitter. So many people wanted to know what cardboard cutout you had in your dressing room this year, because in season one, you had Zac Efron and season two, you had Ashley Tisdale. Um, oh. Okay. Cut out, or we need to know. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this. I didn't have a cardboard cutout this season because <laughs> I put a poll on Twitter. I think right before the second season, and so Corbin Blue was all because of the poll. I was gonna go in that order. So we did Ashley Tisdale last year, and then third season was gonna be Corbin. It was always gonna be Corbin, not realizing that he was going to be on the show and i didn't want to be like a weirdo and be like by the way there's a cardboard cutout of you in my trailer nice to meet you it turns out now in hindsight i should have done it because he's so sweet and he i think he would have found it hilarious but at the time i was like i can't like make him feel weird or like any type of way about this so i was like so i'm not gonna do it this year <laughs> But we got the real thing. Maybe I manifested. Oh my god! So, that is so cool. So really, he was the real cardboard cutout. It was just a real human being. You know, it'd be so fun since people are so invested in this cardboard cutout. <laughs> if you did like a little TikTok or a little video or something that's like, guess who my cardboard cutout is for season three, and then you <laughs> and over, and it's actually him in the trailer. Oh, I wish we were still filming. I mean, oh my god. So brilliant. Oh my gosh, so fun, but that's a great story. So what is one thing about the entire High School Musical, the musical, the series experience that you know now that you wish you knew before the series aired back on November 12th, 2019, or just how it's drastically changed your life? Ooh, I wish 
I knew. Oh my gosh, so many things. Like a lot of like little micro things that I'm just like, oh, I wish I would have known how that worked. Um, but it's mostly like the boring like business side of stuff. But um, in terms of like changing my life, the show really has like changed my life. And I went from like one extreme to the next. And now I get to like live out like every childhood fantasy I had growing up. Um, so it's uh it's kind of surreal <laughs> that is so cool um we love to hear that we are such a fan of you and just to hear how your life has changed so much we're always cheering you on and oh, that, that is just so exciting okay and now um we do want to ask we've asked all our main interview questions but we do have some fan questions from twitter um so Seblos Brazil, that's his username. Um, he wants to know, Frankie, what advice would you give Carlos if you could talk to him? Ooh, advice I would give Carlos if I could talk to him would just be to maybe slow down a bit. Um, don't be too hasty to get somewhere or some role. Um, and um, don't be doing things like crossing names out and moving stuff around and just trust the process. <laughs> That's so good. I feel like we can all use that in our lives. Amazing. <laughs> so I for Darby and um, Ra Rafa Australia, they have two questions that go together. So they want to know, are we getting any Seblos duets anytime soon? Please, fingers crossed. And if you could do a high school musical duet, and then they say, or any duet throughout time with Joe, which one would you choose? Oh my gosh. Me and Joe, we're constantly trying to evolve our library of duets because he does play piano. And so <laughs> it's mostly like karaoke nights here. Um, and I'm not trying to get in trouble by spilling any details about solos and duets and stuff like that. But um, if we had to sing a duet on the show, I would love to do, um, I think it would be really sweet to do, uh, I think it's the, the one about the dance when they're on the garden and it's from the third movie. I can't think of the name right now. Uh, something about a dance. I don't know. I'm going to get roasted for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We will say that we had a little chat about it at Young Entertainment Mag, and we would love to hear you guys do As Long As Your Mind from Wicked. Ooh, we actually have never sang that one. No. Um, okay, I'm putting that on the list. Please do. Please post yeah. it. We want to hear it. That would be amazing. <laughs> So we have a couple of, now these are from questions from Instagram. So Carlos has so many iconic one-liners. Which one is your personal favorite? My personal favorite would have to be um, from, just because it hit so hard during previews from that first season, the trailer where he says, is there somewhere you're supposed to be? And he says Broadway. Cause it like literally tells you everything you need to know about that character in one word. So I think that's my favorite. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, would you actually attend Camp Shallow Lake if you had to IRL in real life? If it was anything like the campsite that we were on, I think I would do it. Uh, I don't know if I would participate in all of the activities, but um, yeah, I would totally go. Yeah, it's, it sounds fun. Okay, this is kind of this is kind of a weird one, but here we go. Do you want an appearance from Seb's cow, Milky White, in a future High School Musical, the musical the series episode? I think there's some sort of like musical theater multi-universe where this happens because Milky White is a character in Into the Woods. So something to do with Julia, the Broadway crossover. I mean, it, it could happen. I think at this point, anything is possible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love, I love the little tie in here. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So, thank you so much for joining us. It was so great talking with you. We're going to post this on TikTok, Instagram reels, our website, everything will be sure to tag you. So be on the lookout. But again, we're so grateful to talk to you and thank you so much for your time. Yay. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.
Thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag. Oh,